All right, good afternoon, everybody. I'm forecaster Nick Dunn here along with forecaster Owen Fritz and forecaster Brent Warren. We have a tornado warning that has now been issued for a few of our counties here in our coverage area. This includes Jefferson County, Ohio. This also includes Brook and Hancock counties in West Virginia until 4.15 p.m. Uh, we're live right now because we have a radar indicated rotation signature. I want to stress that right now we do not have a confirmed tornado on the ground. We do not have a confirmed tornado even on radar. This is just rotation being indicated. Uh, this is not saying that we have anything necessarily on the ground. This is going to be uh, near Steubenville, near Toronto, Weirton, Mingo Junction, Richmond, and then into uh, Pennsylvania here in fairly quick order. So let's jump right in here. Real quick though, first uh, I do want to mention that if you are in the tornado warning area, this is what I need you to do right now. I need you to get to the lowest level possible. You can see on the screen I've got the safety slide pulled up here. Get to the lowest level possible. The best place is going to be a basement or below ground. If you don't have that, get into a bathroom or a closet, a room with no windows in the center of your house. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Take some, say, take something to shelter, uh, to your shelter, excuse me, to protect yourself, whether it be a helmet or a mattress, sofa cushion even. And of course, make sure you're using the same protection for your children. Get there now. You don't have much time in Steubenville. Your time is about up. Mingo Junction, you have a couple minutes before it gets to you. And uh, we'll kind of watch this here very closely, and uh, we'll watch things and see how they evolve. So, Owen, I'll kind of turn things over to you first. Uh, we were watching this just before we got off a couple of minutes ago, and we're seeing there's still some signs of rotation. I'll switch over to the terminal Doppler. You can kind of give us an analysis of what you're seeing. So when you're looking at it, if you're looking at the reflectivity, so we're looking at the winds going inbound and outbound, you can see kind of this uh, this nice distinct area just north of Steubenville uh, that we're keeping an eye on right here for the, the bulk part of the um, the storm here. So we're looking at that near Wintersville. So you're zooming in, you're seeing some of those reds going towards the, excuse me, moving away from the radar site, greens going in towards the radar site. Uh, so you're seeing that and you can see here we have the reds, if you will, moving away from the radar site. Uh, we kind of see this whole thing kind of turning just a little bit. So this is setting up to be uh, maybe some good rotation. And if you look at the reflectivity side, you can kind of see a little bit of a donut hole if you're looking at the rain. So on the back side of this, you can see a little bit of a donut hole that's creating, uh, you know, very distinctly. And I wouldn't be surprised to see if we have some hail in the deep, deep blue and purples that we have on radar. You can also see in the red area, uh, and I, I know yours can be a little bit different, but you can see this distinct like hole in this little bit of a hook on the back side, which is where the rotation would be. So if you were anywhere near Wintersville, Steubenville, as Nick said, even if you're in Weirton watching us, uh, make sure that you are seeking shelter at this time. Steubenville, your time is up. You should be in your tornado safe shelters at this time. It continues to be a valid warning. Uh, we are seeing this uh, be becoming a little bit uh, more uh, tight in rotation, um, albeit I, I don't necessarily think there's anything on the ground at this point, but that could change very quickly. So make sure that you are seeking uh, your, your safe shelters immediately if you're in this area. Along with some strong hail here, Nick, coming back, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see in some of these areas uh, maybe one to two inch hail. I know on some markers we're seeing up to three inches, but I think that's due to some some spikes, but we can we can see one to two inch hail with this storm as well, which is a good indication that it's a very good strong storm as we continue to move on uh, here over the next couple of minutes. So it will be out of our coverage area here very shortly, but uh, if, even if you're anywhere down the path of this, make sure that you're seeking shelter. Again, Steubenville, time's up. Make sure you're in the lowest level of your house, putting many walls between you and the outside as possible, and protect your neck and head. Nick, uh, normalized rotation is showing uh, just again, some very strong, uh, strong rotation. Nothing coming in on what's called correlation coefficient, which is a good thing for any type of debris. So hopefully, hopefully there will be no turn of touchdown here, but we don't know that to be sure. Wouldn't be surprised to see if there's any type of, of uh, maybe a wall cloud or even possible funnel cloud probably creating in this storm as it's just about out of our state, Nick. Yeah, and Brant, I'll turn it over to you. The latest reflectivity scan, we can clearly start to see a little bit of a hook forming on the southwestern side there, very clear kidney bean shape. This is a what we're beginning to call this more of a classic supercell type structure with hail on the north side and then the rotation kind of in the central and southwestern sides of the storm. Yeah, and I will say if you're in Mingo Junction, um, you need to be uh, aware of the storm too. And Nick, even if there isn't a tornado on the ground or a... Um a tornado eventually that does come out of this, you're going to be looking at very large hail. Right now the radar is picking up uh, three and a quarter inch hail. That's larger than teacup size, a little bit smaller 
than uh, a wiffle ball or uh, softball sized. Um, we're not anywhere close to that right now, but three inches, a three and a quarter inch is definitely enough to do some damage. If you're outside, it could, you could uh, potentially cause harm to you um, if you're caught out in it. So this storm right now, you need to take it very seriously, be in your safe place. Um, it's getting ready to exit and cross the Ohio River. Uh, please take this seriously. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll go ahead and pull up our tornado safety slide again. Get to the lowest level, get as low as possible. All right. If we, if you're in a mobile home, you can't be in there. All right. And I know there may be some out there. You know, mobile homes they are great for cheap and affordable housing, but they are not very good when it comes to tornadoes. You got to get out of there. Find a more sturdy structure. If you don't have one, you're just gonna have to suffer and, and get down and just suffer for the worst of this and just get ready for the brunt of it because it is gonna come through. It's gonna come through very quick and hopefully there'll be no damage and hopefully there'll be no tornado touchdown. There is no confirmed tornado on the ground. I'm watching the Weather Service office very closely. Nothing coming from them. Track for you, I'll bring this up for you now so you can see this. Track down 424 for Upper St. Clair. Whitehall, that's gonna be moving into West Virginia, I should say. Uh, it's gonna be there by 430. Actually, I think all those are actually into Pennsylvania towns. So let's get you a little bit more precise track. I'll track this kind of a little bit closer to the rotation and then we'll track this here off to the east again roughly about 40 to 45 miles per hour roughly so that'll put into Weirton at about 351 or essentially right now it's over top of you same for Steubenville your time's up you should have been in shelter a couple minutes ago Mingo Junction you've got a couple minutes before it gets to you and as of, as of the latest scan you have literally probably about another minute or so before it's right over top of you the structure still looks very very well defined very good we still have that uh, little bit of a kidney bean shape we have that hook on the southwestern side of this particular storm you can clearly see that between Steubenville Mingo Junction along State Route 2 State Route 7 US 22 all those places if you're traveling right now and you're listening to this make sure you pull off at the next available possible exit if you see one get into a convenience station they'll hopefully let you in and you can take shelter there and uh, let the storm just come through there and uh, hopefully it'll be in and out very quickly but again very large hail still being detected and um, oh, and I, I was looking for some of those, uh, some of the spikes. I would thought we would see that, but I, I don't necessarily see it in a reflectivity. But I think I wouldn't be surprised if there are uh, one of what we call three body scatter spikes. There'll be an indication of some really destructive hail if we were to see those. Oh, absolutely, Nick. I, I was also looking for that as well. I, again, not seeing it at this point, uh, but definitely, uh, you know, make sure you're in your, your tornado safe shelters. And again, for anybody that's driving, you're recommended to pull off and find a sturdy structure until it passes. If you're in a mobile home, yeah, you got to get out um, and get to your tornado safe place if you can find one or a sturdy structure nearby. But uh, as this continues to move on, uh, the severe thunderstorm uh, warning, or tornado warning, I should say, excuse me, has been updated. They still continue to to look at this and see rotation. So the severe thunderstorm, or excuse me, yeah, severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near Steubenville. And it's moving, Nick, at E, excuse me, it's moving about 40, Nick. So uh, it's not, like, it's moving fairly quickly, but it's not moving, uh, it's not moving in a very, very um, quick, quick pace compared to some of these other storms that we saw earlier. Yeah, that's one thing to note. This is one of our slower moving storms. And if you kind of take a look at the observations from around this storm, uh, the storm is somewhat isolated. It's not really connected to anything else in particular. So thus it has a little bit better environment to work with. When storms are by themselves, they kind of like that. They tend to be solo. solo. If we want to see tornadoes, we don't usually see uh, tornadoes, you know, we don't see numerous tornadoes in lines usually. We typically like to look at these supercell kind of structures. We do get them in lines, but they usually don't look like this. So this is a classic look, what we call a supercell, where you've got a hook. You've got a hook on the south side, and then all your heavy rain and hail, with some of which could be large hail, is on the northern side. So I'll put the radar back into motion so you can see what we're watching here right now. Um, let's see what we've got here. That was me. Oh, okay. Not a problem. Um, so that's kind of where things stand at this particular point in time. We're still in a tornado warning. I've actually, guys, I've noticed this is wanting to drift a little more southeast or more turning to the right a little bit over the last couple of scans. Uh, Brant, sometimes when storms do that, they can, they're, it's either going to weaken or it's going to intensify. And based on the latest scan, that hook is actually really trying to uh, wrap up even tighter than what we've seen. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, right now it's uh, right over the Ohio River, uh, right over Bingo Junction. Usually um, storms will take a left-hand turn uh, when they become stronger. It just depends on where they are. So they could also potentially take on, or take right-hand turns and become stronger. And uh, this uh, is probably the most defined thunderstorm that we have seen today in uh, anywhere of our coverage area. Owen? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to understand this just a little bit. I, I'm, I don't want to say confirmed or anything like that, but, but I'm seeing... I am seeing debris on the correlation coefficient side of things. So, and I don't know if that's just a bad scan, but I am seeing a little bit of a debris ball there near Mango Junction, but it just seems to be detached from the storm. So I'm not quite sure if that's accurate. Uh, but but I can I will tell you, say mm -hmm. I, I will say Owen that the uh, the velocity does match up with that location uh, pretty well uh, right over Mingo Junction. Wouldn't be surprised, as you alluded to just a few minutes ago at Mingo Junction in that area in Steubenville. We're now seeing it looks like multiple areas here trying to have some rotation here um, with this storm. But we're seeing kind of that one area that was up near uh, Steubenville just south of Weirton, and now we're seeing this other area by Mingo Junction. And I do see debris, uh, you know, on correlation coefficient, Nick, so wouldn't be surprising if there's something on the ground there near Mingo Junction uh, in West Virginia. No, guys, I actually think we do have one on the ground, and here's why. Here's a side-by-side -side look. Uh, the reflectivity scan is about a minute behind the correlation coefficient scan. The reflectivity right. scan came in at uh, 352, and the correlation coefficient scans at 353. So there is a potential that there is a tornado in progress uh, just to the east of Mingo Junction at this point. So we'll wait and see. I want to see if that stays on there for a couple of scans or not. Uh, but we see these blues popped up. I've split, I've split the screen here, Louis, so you can see this. Uh, we got the blues picking up there east of Mingo Junction, but again, the reflectivity is about a minute behind. So I want to wait and see what uh, the latest scan is going to show before uh, we get uh, we get too carried away with this and we get uh, overly. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm just going to say as um, as the tornado threat continues, we did have a, a spotter confirmed uh, golf ball sized hail near Steubenville. So as this progresses east uh, into uh, the radar is picking up a lot more than that, but what's falling to the ground is uh, two-inch hail, so that is uh, definitely a concern, too, um, as this thing continues to head east. Uh, and Brant also in that same report, if you were looking, and they are seeing one report of a tennis ball size hail. Oh, uh, yes, so you're right. Yep. So they're also seeing that. So you got to think the tennis ball is two-and-a-half-inch hail. So this is very large. Wouldn't be surprised at all to see that. Uh, it kind of looks like on the latest scan that just popped in here that we are we, we don't see that correlation coefficient debris ball anymore, but we are seeing a hook, a very clear hook, very uh, textbook type hook here uh, on the latest reflectivity scan that I'm looking at, and even on the uh, velocity side of things, very clear. Um, wouldn't be surprised. And what you're seeing, if you're looking at the reflectivity side, you can kind of see it fueling from behind right over Mingo Junction right now. You see that inflow notch, and uh, you also see another one off to the east, and you can see it kind of wrapping. And the whole thing, a little bit, in my opinion anyway, is trying to wrap around uh, as it moves forward here. Um, and we, we do got some other things going on too, but this is the most critical thing at this point. Uh, because of that debris ball, I wouldn't be surprised. Hopefully, uh, there was nobody impacted. Hopefully, it was in more of the, the rural area, the mountainous area. I'm not exactly familiar with that area down there, but hopefully uh, it didn't do any damage or uh, any injuries. But if you're in this area, um, pretty likely that it had a tornado somewhat or some sort of uh, confirmation of a funnel cloud or something like that. So if, take this seriously. Get to the lowest level of your house. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible and cover your neck and head. Nick? Yeah, and I was looking, and there was also a confirmed report of uh, egg-sized hail. Two-inch hail was reported in Overlook Hills in Jefferson County. Two reports of golf ball-sized hail, one of tennis, just to kind of elaborate to what Owen was saying. I'll get that location up there as soon as it populates on the screen. But the latest scan, again, it's coming through the uh, northern portion of Brook County near Mingo Junction. Once this exits, we'll do a quick wrap-up, and then we'll wrap things up, and we'll have to, we do want to take a little bit of a break here and uh, kind of reset and gather our thoughts. Also, Zach is in a, a PDS tornado watch. We'll talk to him again in a little while. They'll be uh, tracking that, and we'll see what they start to get in a little while. But nevertheless, right now, most important, Brook County. We, I think we can go, guys. I think we can give Jefferson County an all-clear at this point. I think the rotation or even any yeah. damaging winds have clearly exited Jefferson County. This looks to be a Brook County situation. I even think those up in Hancock County don't really have a tornado threat to worry about with this. I think this is strictly Mingo Junction and points east, and even I think Mingo Junction and a couple scans we could probably give them an all clear as well. So I'll stop the radar here. Here's a look. You can still see we have a very well-defined, almost call it a six look. It's still wrapped up pretty tight east of Mingo Junction. We can look at velocity, and we can see, again, it's not the tightest signature. It's not the most vibrant, 
but it is there, and that's why we have a tornado warning continuing. It's supposed to go until 4.15, but again, once this is clearly exited, our West Virginia counties, we will, wrap, we, we will wrap this up because we do not cover any counties in Pennsylvania. I know we have a couple fans close to Pittsburgh, but just know, unless you are traveling well south of Pittsburgh at this point, I, I really wouldn't be too concerned about it at this point. This will likely trend south over towards places like maybe, um, maybe Midway, Baldwin, and really even further south than that. I'm not very familiar with the territory out there, but just know if you're south of Pittsburgh, that's where I would be concerned about. Latest scan, I think maybe one more scan will be good. There's still some very large hail, it looks like, on the West Virginia-Pennsylvania border. Guys, uh, I would not be surprised if we're seeing larger than two inches. Oh, and you said tennis is two and a half? Yes. Two and a half? Okay, that's kind of what I thought. I wasn't sure when to confirm that. So, again, very classic supercell exiting our coverage area at this point in time. Mingo Junction, you're in the all clear. You can come out of your tornado shelters. Steubenville, Weirton, Toronto, all of you can really come up out of your tornado shelters. The tornadic threat has ended. You may still be under the warning, but just understand that the, the warning will likely get trimmed back here within the next couple scans. And, in fact, they, they just they updated the warning. So, just as they I was just, talking. They just trimmed it back. So. Yep. Uh, we'll Jefferson, see. Yeah, they're still in it. Um, okay. So they, they they trimmed it back and just clipped port of Je port, portions of Jefferson County, and I think that's due to the fact that there's a little bit of rotation between Steubenville and Mingo Junction, not tight at all, but they are still seeing just some small little areas of rotation, so they're going to be a little bit more on the safe side of that. So, yeah, I, I am seeing that too. So if you're north of Mingo Junction, between north, uh, Mingo Junction is south of Steubenville. There is still a little bit of rotation there, so you should remain in your tornado safe shelters if you're inside of the polygon and make sure, again, that you get to the lowest level of your house. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. I could say one good thing about this, Nick. It looks like this, this line is trying to straighten up just a little bit, and we're not seeing as much of a hook as we, we had seen here in just, just a few minutes. So uh, that's a good sign uh, as it starts to move forward uh, here over the next couple of minutes, Nick. Yeah, if you guys look at GR, we can actually pick up the uh, three-body scatter spike on correlation coefficient. There's a very, yes. very well-defined spike. It's, it begins because the storm is so large. Uh, but you can, if I'm, I'll try to illustrate. So if you look here on the correlation coefficient, where I have this red square on the left-hand side of your screen, it might be kind of hard to see, but you see this line that shoots out, and it's kind of yellowish, reddish, orangish, where it shoots straight out, and it extends out quite a ways. Uh, that's a very good indication that we could be seeing a three-body scatter spike, which is an indication of very large hail capable of producing damage to windshields and cars and roofs. So please stay indoors. They have canceled the severe thunderstorm warning for this area, and that is perfectly in line because we have a tornado warning already in place. So again, another scan or so, we should be able to wrap this one up, hopefully, and we'll kind of get things uh, squared away and back to on, hopefully. We can kind of get a little bit of a break in here. Uh, real quick, though, also watching back Zanesville over towards Cambridge. That storm looking very intense. So there's actually multiple hail cores there capable of producing one-inch hail, winds to 60 miles per hour. And uh, the latest scan there, let's see, latest scan. Now, at least the hail part has exited our coverage area. It looks like it is definitely trying to wrap up again as it's heading towards Burgettstown and McDonald, not to be confused with the restaurant McDonald's, nevertheless. But seeing much in the way of I'm not seeing much in the way of any reports coming out of this at this time no and I think the um, over the last couple of scans I think the storm has kind of uh, fallen apart just a bit it, it may have been the classic situation which uh, unfortunately a lot of our tornadoes are fortunately I should say is a, a touch and go situation where it was down for a split second the radar caught it and then the next scan it was gone and um, if there was a tornado that would be the best case scenario uh, minimal damage hopefully um, nobody was impacted, but uh, it seems like the storm has kind of taken on a different shape and lost some of its feature um, that we would look at for producing a tornado. Owen? Yeah, you know, uh, Nick, I'm looking uh, near Wheeling right now, so if, if we're looking over there, I'm trying to remember the county exactly where Wheeling is at. I believe it's what, Monroe, Noble, a little bit, maybe it's Belmont and Burnsville. 
Uh, I'm looking very, I'm looking very particular in the Belmont County area. There we go, St. Clairsville. There is some rotation starting to pop up there as well, just outside of Barnesville, south of Fairview. Uh, we we'll have to keep a very close eye on that. Um, nothing like overly impressive, but it is kind of looking uh, kind of similar to what we had before. Um, in, in this particular situation, before it become a tornado warning, kind of a similar setup. So we'll have to watch that one here very closely. And I know that uh, Storm Prediction Center, I don't know, they must be issuing another update. Uh, I'll have to look at that here in just a second. But yeah, but I'm watching that as well, not to take away from the tornado warning, but uh, you're, you know, if you're looking at uh, normalized rotation, things like that, we are seeing it right near Barnesville. But uh, so I'm keeping a close eye on that one as well. So if you're anywhere in Belmont County, just a heads up, make sure you have a way to receive a warning uh, if it, uh, if it comes out here. And man, that, that, that scatter spike is still there uh, on uh, on the products, Nick. So we're definitely seeing a good indication of large hail. Wouldn't be surprised to see, uh, you know, they got it marked at two. Wouldn't be surprised to see uh, some more reports come in with the hail. But I think pretty much now this has exited our area. It's definitely out of Ohio at this point. And I think you'll see either the tornado warning be allowed to expire early for Jefferson County, Ohio, or it will be uh, expired on time. But I can say for pretty much certainty that it's moved out of the area. So that's a good thing uh, if you're in Jefferson County, Ohio. But if you're in the Pittsburgh counties, yeah, make sure that you're still seeking shelter at this point um, if you're watching from the Pittsburgh area. Nick. Yeah, real quick, the uh, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a mesoscale discussion update for our region. So as we kind of wrap things up, I do want to kind of zoom out and uh, we'll discuss what they're talking about. And I will show that PDS tornado watch, as I promised. So I'll turn off the radar. We should see... It might take a second for the mesoscale discussion to populate, but it does include the I-70 corridor. They are saying that the thunderstorm development is being aided by an unstable boundary layer air characterized by about 1,000 joules of capes. So that's not surprising. Again, we've, we still are under the severe thunderstorm watch until 8 p.m. for our neck of the woods. Um, they do think that a downward trend seems likely through 6 to 8 p.m. until then widely scattered storms, perhaps including a small evolving cluster approaching northern portions of Indy, may continue to pose a risk for severe hail and strong gusty surface winds. We talked about that PDS tornado watch. I do want to show that. Uh, those that are out across southeast Iowa, northeast Missouri, and most of Illinois, it's actually a very large portion of Illinois. You see them flashing purple on your screen. Very good indication of where that PDS tornado watch is. We've already had one confirmed tornado in Iowa. They're saying hail to two and a half inches in diameter, so it would be tennis ball size hail. So very intense. Again, this is all part of the same system it is trending in our direction. We will see some more development likely to take place. We'll touch base with Zach here after a bit, and we'll talk to him and see where things are standing there. But again, for the time being, looks like they have. Looks like they're continuing the tornado warning. Yes, they are. But again, it has basically moved out of our area. So the only other active warning in our coverage area is a severe thunderstorm warning from Muskingum and Guernsey County. That will go until 4:15 for quarter size hail winds to 60. So we'll continue to watch things here. Yeah, go ahead, Owen. Well, I'm just, I've, we got a, it looks like to me, a, sorry, a delayed report coming out of the National Weather Service in Pittsburgh saying that there was a report by maybe one of the members of the media about a rain rat tornado north of Mingo Junction. So I, I'm thinking that was delayed. I said I just got the call. So I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. I, I'm thinking that's delayed by just a few minutes. I think it's pretty much uh, exactly what we were discussing. Um, earlier when we talked about, just a few minutes ago, I should say, we were talking about between Mingo Junction and Steubenville, so there was two areas of rotation. I'm thinking that's what that was talked about because I, I, I'm clearly the, the, the bulk of this has moved moved away from, uh, moved, excuse me, moved away from the area, and uh, we got a lot to reset and talk about as a team. I know the Storm Prediction Center just released their outlooks, their next round of outlooks for the day, so we got to look at that and look at some of the other stuff that's coming in, and even wind advisories being issued all across the area now for tomorrow, which we'll get those posted shortly uh, as well, so let's keep an eye on that, Nick, but I think for now, I, I think we can go ahead and wrap it up uh, because it's clearly out of our coverage area at this point. Uh, in the state of Ohio. Yeah, Branch, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap things up again? we got a lot to reassess. We need to do some resetting, yeah. and uh, we'll kind of go from there. But uh, we kind of had some plans today to maybe cover some of the storms in Illinois. It's taking a little bit longer to get going, but we've had enough going on here that uh, we've stayed fairly busy today already. Yeah, and um, I don't have anything else to say right now. And Most of the stuff I'll discuss off the air, but um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we're just waiting for the activity. The, uh, the activity has been on and off throughout the day. Um, we're expecting that uh, potential explosion of energy to the west here to happen um, over the next couple of hours. Um, uh, over there, it's only 3 o'clock, so they've still got plenty of time to go through the evening and night hours. Um, and that could potentially be knocking on our doorstep later tonight, too. So, I mean, Nick, that's all I want to say. Um, just stay, as, as you've seen. We've had numerous severe thunderstorm warnings, and we've, to, we've had a tornado warning now, so uh, the atmosphere is ready for it. Uh, just when it happens, uh, it's a it's a minute-by-minute minute basis. Yeah, absolutely. So with that for Ken, or not for Ken, I don't know why. I keep thinking Ken's with us this afternoon. He's so, yeah, he's with us somewhere. I'm sure I'm sure he'll be around at some point tonight or he's watching things closely. So, so uh, for Owen and Brandt and myself, we'll keep you posted. We're going to do some resetting. We're probably going to gather, uh, get our thoughts reset for the evening because we still have all evening and night to go. So we'll stay tuned. We'll keep you posted. And thanks for tuning in this afternoon. Stay safe out there.